Okay. Is that good? Excellent. Wonderful. Happy holidays, everyone. So here we are. It's Monday evening. Big week for the market. There's a Fed meeting Wednesday, and we're going to see what the Fed says. So for those of you that don't know what I do, I focus on stocks that are falling. I focus on shorts. Uh, Reed, yes, I see you here. That's fine. And I specifically, specifically, specifically uh, like to short because stocks move or fall faster than they rally. <laughs> I mean, that's just a fact. So I'm somebody that talks fast and thinks fast and I like to make money fast. And also when you're in and out of a stock, if you can get in and out of it and make the same amount of money in a half an hour as you would in six and a half hours or the entire day that the market's open, obviously you'd rather work for less time. So it's really time is money kind of old adage. And the reason that I like to short, like I said, is because stocks fall faster than they rally. So we're gonna to talk today about shorting stocks for fast profits. And this is me. Today was on Charles Schwab Network. Actually, I will send out that video tomorrow. I talked about the market. I talked about the Fed. I talked about interest rates. So it was a good chat uh, with Nicole Pitalides, who used to be on Fox Business and then went and started on with Schwab Network. And again, you can trade anywhere you want, but they have a channel where they have daily shows and they have guests on, so it's pretty interesting if you're someone that trades there, you should definitely go check it out. Now, if you have questions, you can also call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. And again, if you have questions, you can feel free to call me. If I don't answer the phone, you can leave me a message and I will call you back. So we're gonna talk about just kind of pulling it together, recapping here, we're into the very end of 2023. If you're someone that's been trading this year, be honest with yourself and ask yourself, how was your year trading? Did you have a good year? Did you have a bad year? Did you make money this year? Did you lose money this year? You know, I've talked to lots and lots of people all the time. And I think, you know, a lot of people started out the year well. Of course, people like to or prefer to go long that day trade. And then all of a sudden the market started changing. And then, you know, a lot of people were wanting to do swing trades and they didn't have a good second half of the year. What I do, what I focus on is pretty much momentum trading. So even when we short, we're shorting the momentum. Today we did Walmart, for example, the momentum and that has been to the downside. It's been a good short. So if you look for specific things to trade each and every day, it could be a different ticker symbol every day, you know? then you're trying to get the move in that specific stock where you don't necessarily need the market. Now, if I have the market's help for something, that's great. But the market wasn't an easy read this year in 2023. It wasn't easy for me. In fact, I got the market wrong to start out the year in January. I was very, very, very surprised how bullish January was for the market. And again, we will close up for the year no matter what, even after Wednesday's meeting, because we'll never make it back down to where we started out the year. But how we end up the year, well, we have three weeks left, so I don't know. But if you've been trading and you've been needing the market for your trains, you may be struggling for the year because it really was chopping a lot of months this year. It wasn't like a smooth rally like we saw in 2021. 2021 was a power trend market to the upside, very bullish market for that particular year. And then 2022, we had a lot of selling. So 2022 was an easy year, to, I think, to short. And again, this year was just choppy. But if you've been losing money this year, if you've not been doing well, it's important to learn and do something different because you don't wanna do the same thing in 2024 as you did in 2023 if you lost. Here are stats. I don't have the last couple of days in here. This is through uh, actually the 5th of December. But these are our stats for the year in the day trade room. And if you decide you wanna come and learn with me, you can join the room. So this is an average risk of about $3,000 per trade. And again, these are day trades. These are trades on margin. I call the trades in the live room, okay? And again, if you decide you wanna take my class and learn my method, you will have access to the live room. So year to date, 536,460. Again, this is only through December 5th. I'll add 
the most recent stats, but all in all, a very productive year. You do not have to risk $3,000 per trade. You can risk less. You can risk 100, 200, 500, but you must have a margin account in order to do these trades because these are day trades, okay? What do I mean by a day trade? I mean you short a thousand shares of something like Walmart and you have to have margin to take the trades. Now, I also do options for those of you that are thinking about trading options with me or interested in options. I also do options. These are results here today for the options newsletter. Again, I have to update this through the last two weeks as well, but the options, I'm risking more in my options. You can risk more, you can risk less. It's one of these things where it depends what works for you. The reason that people like doing options though is because you can open up an options account with $2,000 and you can have a cash account where you don't need margin to trade options. But we've had sterling results this year with options and most of them actually have been puts. Again, a pun is a short, which we're gonna talk about here. Um, yes, I am talking, can everybody hear me? Yep, I'm talking, hold on, someone just said they can't hear. Yes, I'm speaking. Can everyone hear me? Jim is saying he has no sound. Hello? Is anyone there? I've been talking. I hope that those of you that are here can hear me because then I was talking to myself. Uh, Johnny can hear me. I don't know why Jim doesn't have any sound. Okay. Chris can hear me. Very good. All right. All right, let's get back to it. So again, I'm risking more in my options. And there's various reasons for that. You can risk what works for you. You have to look at your cash. So we're over 2 million this year. And again, this is not updated the last two weeks as well. Stats for this year, we've been doing good. We're not quite done yet. We still have a couple weeks left in the year. We'll see. We could have a busy Wednesday, Thursday, Friday um, for this week. You see the messages, just no audio. I'm talking. So I don't know. Sorry, Jim. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, we're going to talk about 2024. What do you want to accomplish in 2024? Where do you want to be 12 months from now? It's really about preparing to have a better year next year, no matter what. Even if you had a fabulous year this year, you want to do better next year. It's constantly wanting to improve, improve our financial situations. Again, if you're moving forward with your trading and you're doing better year over year, then regardless of whatever happens with the economy or interest rates or inflation, whether we go into recession or not, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay if you're constantly improving your own particular situation and particularly your trading. Okay. Uh, Johnny is saying you trade with each trade. They'll not let you day trade options unless you have a $25,000 account. Well, you don't have it set up right. You could open up an options account as a cash account. You're talking about trading margin. So again, you will need $25,000 to trade uh, if you're trading margin, which means in and out, in and out of day trades and options. If you open up an options account as a cash account, you can be in and out of as many options trades as you want without 25,000. But you need to talk to them about that. It's set up as a cash account. So again, you can trade options and you can trade them and as many as you want with no restrictions if you have it set up as a cash account. That's something that you must call your broker about and specify with them. John Z. So again, it's, it's, it's the type of account that you have, the time of the day that you have to train. Again, if you're with me in the room, you got to be there when the room opens at 9 a.m. and we start training after the open and we're usually done training by 10 a.m., 10, 15. You want to do options, you don't have to be in the room. The options newsletter gets emailed to you directly and many of the trades get sent out before the open. Some, some are during the day but mostly in the morning and you take the trade when you get the newsletter. You don't have to be in the room if you're working or doing something else. But it's really, it's the American dream to become rich, successful, financially independent. And really this is the ticket, you know, where you don't have to rely on someone else. There's so many industries and we've seen this since COVID in 2020 that have been just shattered as a result of different things that are out of people's control. 
I was talking to a friend the other day um, that works for a hospital, and the hospital is uh, laying people off. Um, they lost a lot of money since COVID, and I and I thought to myself, well, that's strange. But again, you know, things that are happening in different industries that you don't even know about it that are being affected. And of course, I live in New York. For those of you who don't know, I do live in New York, and a lot of businesses closed in New York in 2020, 2021, and real estate went up, and businesses can't afford to even pay the rents, you know, the commercial rent, rent space. So we live in very, very different times. Being independent, taking care of yourself is always a way to go. And again, day trading is something that you can do on the side. You can do it on the side part-time. And when I say part-time, I mean you're not working eight hours a day. You don't have to be at a desk for the six and a half hours the market is open. Again, you can day trade in the room for half an hour, or you can do options, and you don't even have to be in the room. So it's whatever works for you. If it's two days a week, if it's three days a week. I have some uh, students, some people that are in the room, but they're not there every day. One's a dentist. He can only trade two days a week. So two days a week, he's in the room. The other three, he's working. It's whatever works, okay, for your schedule and about transitioning, transitioning into doing this full time if that's what you want to do. But really, it's the American dream. And this doesn't mean you have to live in America. It's the whole idea. It's the, what encompasses the American dream to become rich, successful, and financially independent and to work for yourself. People who take risks can make millions of dollars. Trading is a vehicle for even the average person without a lot of money to, in fact, get rich. Not in one trade, but over time, you grow it. And it won't happen without a successful strategy. Everybody wants everything yesterday, now, now, me, me, me. This is the world that we live in. If we take where we're at right now and actually think about the future and build it and have goals, that's where you can achieve those goals and get somewhere with it. And I think the problem is that so many people, like I said, are so impatient with trading. And But you know they're attempting to trade for years. They do crazy things. They don't work. They go hog wild. They lose money. And then they're really just continually falling backward. In the end, it, you just you won't be successful without a successful strategy. And you won't be able to make money in the market if you don't take risks. There's no guarantees in trading on the market, but that's why also when you take risk, you have to be thoughtful about your risk, why you're taking the trade, how much money you're risking. But risk takers really thrive in a trading environment. And the winners win big and the losers lose big, and it'll always be that way. That's just the way the setup of the market is. So how can you attain the American dream? You must stay focused on the dream. You must get clear with your expectations of yourself in the market, your goals, okay? Be realistic with when you, how you want to achieve those goals and start with the amount of money you have, you have, okay? Whatever that is. And be satisfied risking what you can afford right now. If it's $100, fine. You build it. Keep your eye on the goal. Be patient with yourself to grow your capital over time. Chunk, I say chunk it out, chunk it out, chunk it, chunk it, chunk it out. Learn a good strategy from me and then apply it daily and to find a pick you want to trade every day. And don't gamble your money away in poor trades. Too many people do that. Focus on quality trades and get committed to the time and money it takes until your dream is realized. If you, if you do that, you'll have the highest chances of success. And I can get you there. And I'm here to help you. And that's why I teach my class once a month to try to help people. That's the reason why I run the room. And trading, like I said, is a real job if you take it seriously. The problem is a lot of people don't. They look at it like gambling, and trading is not gambling. So again, my class is called the Golden Gap Course. This is a class that I teach, and in this class, I teach people my whole strategy. I teach them how to do it, what to do. Now, I'm going to stop the share for a minute because I'm going to share. Getting back to what I was saying, you need a foundation to trade. You need an infrastructure for every entry, and it's a strategy. The strategy is a core reason behind why you even watch this doc in the first place or even contemplating an entry or trade in it. We're not trend trading here. It's nothing, that's not what we're doing. We're trading the gap. And an entry in a stock should not be taken unless the trade is a foundation supporting it. The foundation for me is gaps. So I use one strategy daily to stay consistent and it's gaps. So I get up in the morning and I make a watch list of things that are gapping, then I rate them. Okay, we just went over one thing that's gonna be on my list tomorrow. There will be others, okay? Again, today we did Walmart which gapped down and fell, and we shorted it. So again, there's many, many, many days that I get up and I have a list of umpteen things, and then I have to narrow it down. You can't short every bearish gap. You can't go long every bearish gap. You can't short every bullish gap. You can't go long every bullish gap up. So again, I developed this checklist. This is the meat and potatoes again, and what I do. 
Now here's another example of a gap. This is one we did as an option the prior week. This was Netflix. Netflix closed here, gap down. This is a daily chart. So the difference between the close and the open is a gap. Again, then it did this, fell again, boom. Then it closed here, gap down, fell again. So again, the stock price of Netflix was dropping. You would want to short this or buy a put. That's how you would make money in getting the move to the downside. Okay. And this is one here. And again, you know, where you could have done it and done it actually as something that would have fallen and you would have held it. Someone was mentoring day trading, uh, day trading options. This is something where you would have wanted to hold it. Okay. The bigger move was actually uh, better than actually getting in and out. You follow me? So again, the, the faster move, I should say, or the, the most profitable move was the move to hold if you did the put versus just getting in and out quickly in one, in one day. Now, what is a gap? A stock gap, so the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. Simple, okay? But again, there's so many things that gap every day. How do you know which one to do? We're looking to trade momentum, 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 momentum. That's how we're gonna get the move. So if we see something in the morning and I'm raining, go through my checklist and it rates 20 points or more, then I wanna do the gap in the direction of the gap. Meta had a beautiful short. Again, we got in, got out. This was on 12.4, okay? This was this day, so take it back. Stock closed here, gap down, open, fell. So this was a short. So again, in this taily guy in here is where we did a short. Here's the one minute. So stock closed here, gap down, we shorted it, got the drop, got out, done, boom. And again, this is a day trade. You would have needed a margin account to do this. Now, if you don't have the 25,000 to trade at a retail broker, you can open up a prop account. There are plenty of prices that, that offer prop where you can open up a prop account, get 10 to 1 margin with $2,500. So that's another idea if you don't want to do options. But for me, it's all about the fast trades, quick in and out and done. There have been days in the last week where I've shorted Walmart and held it because it's had such a nice, nice bleeder move. But again, I most of my trades, I'm in and out quickly. And you could have been out of Walmart very, very quickly as well. So when, when I'm looking at something, I'm trying to get a big move, fast, early, momentum, and then get the direction right. So all of my prep time is in the morning in the pre-market. Or you can even get ready to, you know, at night. If you see gaps at night, you can make watch lists at night, or you can rate them at night. I'm a morning person, so I like to do it in the morning. And of course, like I said, things change. But this was the meta trade. Entry was 315.75, 2,000 shares was a risk of 3,700. We did an ad in this. This is an advanced um, type of trade, but you can do an ad if you're in the room if I call it. Total shares was 4,000, average price was 315.87. Again, this is a day trade. You would have needed a margin account to do it, or you could have bought a put, but you would have had to get out as quick as I did with the day trade with this. Profit was $8,680. Again. This is sort of an expensive stock within the range of things that we're doing right now, but there's many things that we do. There's things that we do that are $20 a share. Actually, we went long today. We did Macy's long today, which was around $20 a share. So some things we do are pricey, some things we do are small, some things we do are medium. I'm not trading any penny stocks, because again, they don't have the volume, and the moves in penny stocks, and the, when they gap, are not created with institutional money. Now, how did I know that Meta would fall that that was a short? Again, I got up in the morning and I rated the gap, just like I'm gonna do tomorrow morning. And I use a 26 point checklist. It tells me what to trade and what to look for in the day. How am I finding the information? In the chart, in the chart, in the daily chart. In the, it's there. It's just that many people don't know what to look for. And when I trade, I'm looking for momentum. This gives me an edge and it will give you an edge. Momentum trading is one of the most profitable and fastest ways to make money trading. Learn how to take a position in stock in anticipation. I'm anticipating that XYZ is gonna drop or fall or sell off. And I say XYZ could, because it could be any stock, all right? So I, it's anticipation the stock will have an explosive move and these enormous moves happen in one direction. They happen very quickly and fast. 
I mean, again, we're waiting for the Fed meeting on Wednesday to, for something to happen. What's that going to be? I don't know. The market could sell off. The market could rally. We were waiting for an explosive move, okay, because the market hasn't been moving in the last month. Momentum trading is very profitable, and that is how you can make a lot of money in the market. And again, when I'm trading, I'm looking for a dollar, two dollars or more, not five cents or ten cents. So many people trade in scalp because they, they can't find things that are getting the big move. The whole point of momentum trading is that you could take a very, very reasonable size in something and get a big move without some crazy, crazy uh, amount of risk to make the same amount of money. Otherwise, you'd have to take 10,000 shares of something, you know, to make $1,000 with a 10 cents move. And that's just crazy to me. So we don't scout. Okay, we're looking for big moves. Gaps happen in the market on a regular basis. However, some gaps are better than others. Some gaps are nothing gaps, and some gaps are very powerful displays of institutional money. The most important gaps in the market are gaps that signify a change in direction or a bigger move in the same direction. Understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will help you to know what to do and when a change is occurring. That is how you know when the power of money will flow to pay you. Because I'm trying to get on the side of the power of money, of institutional money. What is institutional money? Big banks, hedge funds. Again, why isn't the market over the high right now? Because institutional money is waiting to see what the Fed says. And may very well go long, and the market may make new highs before the end of the year. I don't think that's going to happen, but it could. So again, if institutional money was full throttle in this market, it would already be over the high. That's, that's my take on it. But again, my reigning system is 26 points and it pinpoints the footprints of institutional money. This is a system that I created over three years. And since I've had the business now, which I've had the stock switch business for 11 years, that's how long I've been teaching people how to do it. Now, if you join again, I'm in the room, I'm rating the gaps myself before I even trade or call any trades or do anything in the room. But I do the homework myself every day. I never skip it, okay? And that's the beauty of learning what to do when it's a process. Like for those of you that watch CNBC or Kramer when he's on TV, he may say, I like this stock, I like this, I like that. Whatever the case may be, he doesn't have a system where he looks at something and applies the same method to everything and then makes a decision. He said, well, I read this report and therefore I think this. That's opinionated. This is more factual data. Again, because I'm looking at the, the price. And that's something that none of us can deny. Well, we can all see the price of where the market closed today. We can all see the price of where we were just talking about Oracle. We can see where it closed. We can see where it's trading now. Again, where it's trading now will be different than tomorrow morning. But I also get this question too. Can you do this for a beginner? Yes. You may have a learning curve, but quite frankly, everyone that I've ever taught has a learning curve because you don't know what I know about gaps. And so you're going to have a learning curve when you come to me no matter what. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. And again, I do my best to explain things to people to try to help people. Now, for someone that was on, earlier was talking about the options, here was an option we did in Tessa. This one expired on the Thanksgiving week. Uh, the cost was reasonable. $4 for one contract. If you bought 20 and spent eight grand, you could have bought three and spent $1,200. And you could have made $900. This is a good trade, in and out. 75%, it's a good, solid trade. So let's take a look at the Tesla chart. 11.16, I called the 230s. This feels like a while ago. This was like before Thanksgiving. Here it is. Stock closed here, gap down, open, fell. And there it is. So you hear, you see this on the day that I called it, with snug as above, fell down, boom, out, done. Mm, that's it. And again, you can take it and get out, or you could have held it for one more move and gotten out. But again, even in an option, it's not a swing trade where you're holding it forever, ever, 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 ever. You're taking it, getting the money, get out. Getting the drop, get out. And in this case, a put, we did puts, it's in the letter. This is what the newsletter looks like, the puts. A put is a short, okay? Put is a short where you're, you're just, it's another way to take the trade that's less expensive than doing that on margin, for example. Any questions here so far? Let me just see if there's any questions. How are we doing? Anyways, you must have an edge to be successful. Mine is really spotting momentum before the move occurs. But, you know, it's also the fast trades. The shorting, which I like to do. Here's Baba. We've been doing this a million times. Um, 
This has mostly worked out, though, better, to be honest with you, as an option. But we did do a day trade in this. This was way back, almost a month ago, November 29th. Entry was 74.80, risk was 3,200, exit was 74.50, profit was $1,200. Again, let's see how BABA closed today. Hold on one second. So anyways, here was the one minute on the BABA. Again, this was a month ago, November 29th. Stock closed here, gap down, dropped, rallied. We shorted it, got the drop. Again, here's the momentum, here's the sell-off. Drop, down, boom. You take it, get in, get out. So again, you can do day trades. Or you can do options. So it's institutional money, big, big, big money in the market. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're always looking for, okay? We're looking for a big move. Here was Google, the strike was 134, expiration was 12,823. The type was a put, okay? And again, this was the biggest trade actually we did or one of the biggest ones we did on the options newsletter in the last week. So what happened with this? 11.30, stock closed here, gap down, open, fell. So we did the 134s. You see this? So again, this is a sell-off. Okay. So the cost was cheap, $1.50. Number of contracts was 60, risk was $9,000. This was an advanced trader risk. We'll go over a beginner risk in a minute. Sold at $4.50, profit was $18,000. Return on investment, 200%, 200%, okay? Great trade. Now, if you took a smaller risk, $1,200, profit was 2,400. Return on investment, again, 200%. So you have to make money on a regular basis if you want to do this. I'm amazed at how many people trade the market and lose. And they, they do it for years. Like, again, like I said, I've had the business now for 11 years. I have people following me that long. And they're losing money every year. And they just keep trading. I, I just, you know, it's, it's very mentally exhausting. It's financially exhausting and mentally exhausting when you're trading and you're losing. Uh, so you, it's just you kind of got to take, take a step back and realize that you got to do something different at some point. But I'm following the moves that institutional money makes in the market. And then I'm capturing those moves on a small time frame in a small period of time daily. That's the only way to do it. But again, getting back to what I was talking about, about shorting, the benefits of shorting are fear, panic. You're shorting into the move. You're getting a big, big move to the downside where people are upset. They're worried. It's, it's the flow of money. Is money coming in? Is money going out? If money's going out, then you want to short, okay? If money's going in, you want to go long. Again, we went long Macy's today. Macy's got bought today. It's power of money, institutional money. It's in charge of the market and the stocks at all times, even if you think it's not. It actually is. Oh, here's the Walmart. I have, I have a, this is an old chart of Walmart. This is back from the middle of November. Um, but again, Walmart broke 150 today. So again, this was the start of a very bearish move in Walmart, which was happening with what? Institutional money was selling the stock, selling it off. And if you can learn how to read the footprints of big position players before the momentum occurs, you get in and then you make money. And then whether you hold it or get out of half or do as an option or a day train, that's up to you. But it's the whole point of getting the direction right, getting the big move, and we're looking for institutional money when we take the trade. Now, again, I'm not in anything with the market because I'm waiting to see what happens here on Wednesday, but... We were shorting the market in October. We did a lot of shorts in the market in October. It worked. We, here was a put. We did the SPY 420s. Cost was $4.70. Sold at $9.50. Profit was $9,600. Return on investment was 102%. And again, if you did three contracts, how much would you have made? Same thing. What if you did one? What if you spent $470? 
you could have doubled your money. So this is, you know, a good, easy way to make money without having a margin account. And again, without having to sit, babysit the trade. So the 25th was here. And again, we did the 420s. This is the market. This was, feels like a long time ago, but it was October. Stock close here, gap down. We did the 420 puts, got the drop. Boom. Again, could have got in, got out. Could have got in, got to hold it down, into the drop. Out, done, boom. Again, either way, you couldn't have screwed this up. It fell. It fell. Any questions here? Any questions here about anything so far? Anyways, golden gaps have huge opportunity because they spot power of money. And that's what controls the market. That's what's in charge. The trend of the market or any stock is set by the power of money people. Here was an early BABA that we did. Seems like a long time ago. Again, this was a month ago. We shorted BABA. We did the we bought the 80 puts. Stock was at 70 something today. Look how way ahead of this I was. November 16th, I called this trade in the newsletter. And again, it's a trade I did and got in, got out. But look how far this stock has fallen since then. Again, read the chart, read the read the momentum that it was to the downside. Again, we did a put, and this was very reasonably priced. We did the uh, the $80 ones, and it cost $2 for one. You could have made 75%. Here was the day we did it. Oh, here is the 16th. Oh, you've been following it down ever since. You chunk it. You chunk it out. You're, this is trading is making money, whether it's day trades, options. You take the trade, get the move, get out. Take the trade, get the move, get out. This, this, it's, that's what has to be your habit. And again, I'm not talking about scalping. I'm talking about getting momentum move. But how do I do it? How do I make the picks? I find the gap. I rate the gap using the 26-point rating system. And if it gets 20 points or more per my rating system, then I take it in the direction of the gap. It's one focus a day. I might do more than one thing a day, but I try to just focus on one thing a day. And again, if you want to become a professional, then you have to have a focus. Professional traders have specialized strategies, systems, and reasons for taking the trade, not because they feel like this or they think the market's going to do this. Again, it's very difficult to get the market right every day. You need to find things where you don't need the market. And once you learn how to find momentum, making money really isn't hard. There are days I have a hard day because things don't go my way, but then I pick it up and have a huge day usually the next day. So that's just part of any job or any career that you have. You may not have a good day one, once in a while. It's the point that you're making money way more than you're ever losing. So, And it's the focus. It's the focus on the rating system. And like I said, I never skip it. I get up and I rate the gaps, and I've been doing this for as long as I have. I could do it in my sleep. I still go through the process. So if you decide you want to come and learn from me, you will learn how to find stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, big moves on the day, early confirmation of my bias in the move between 9.30 and 10 a.m., and precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward. Okay? So we're looking to analyze a large time frame, which is on the daily. Then we're entering trades in the one minute chart. And again, you're gonna learn all this in the class if you come and you decide to learn. So the last class for 2023 is this weekend in a few days. I still have a few spots available. It's December 16th and 17th. It is hard to believe it's the end of 2023. It really is. But if you learn my rating system, it will help you pick which stock to trade each day. It pinpoints ahead of time which stock will have the move in the day with volatility to trade. And having a checklist keeps you organized and focused. Having a checklist forces you to look at what you should be looking at in a chart in a stock to make the correct direct decision, to get the direction right. And again, there's many times that gap downs will flip, so you gotta find the best one. And we will sometimes we'll go long. Like I said, we went long Macy's. But checklists really help you stay on point with your goals your financial goals what are you doing and again to get away from the whole gambling mentality which so many traders get all caught up into once once they start trading it's the lure of the money and making the money and that's great but if you don't know what you're doing you're going to lose it 
So training, training is one of these kind of careers where it's definitely not for everyone. But if you are wanting to do this, if this is one of your dreams, if this is one of your goals, if you have the, the market bug, so to speak, and you have a desire to do this, then you absolutely need a strategy or you won't be successful. And you really need a mentor too to be successful as well. And it'll make it a heck of a lot easier for you. Struggling isn't the way to go. And, and the thing is, again, it's not essential that you train. It is essential if you trade that you learn a strategy that's successful or you won't be. So I, what I do is my whole focus is gaps. My whole focus is a shorting, okay? And my focus is momentum and finding the gaps that are created with large institutional money because it, that's what makes a gap in the first place. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap. And then you confirm that the large money will flow with it when you get the entry. And by having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get this confirmation. Then you have conviction. Then you can take the risk. Then it's on your side and you play it. And then you put the stop in and you do it. But it's all about the gap. Gaps are an event and they create a sense of urgency, specifically the panic, which is what I'm looking for. And you can have panic to the upside too. But anyways, an action is being forced by participants of the stock, and this is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power money, okay? Any questions here? I've been going along. Any questions from anyone? Some of you are new, I haven't seen you. Some of you have seen, seen a long time. Johnny Z, you're one of those people who's been following me a long time. Anybody want to ask me any questions? Anyways, again, getting back to what I was saying, it's it's just, you know, a lot of people are trading the market and they just, they really don't know what they're doing. And I think that that's always going to be the case. People just trade and they have a gambling mentality. They're doing things they think will work and they don't really work. But it's, it's so important and you're just going to make such a huge leap if you learn what to do and you'll make, you know, just scrunch the time in. You know, time is just too precious to waste. Again, I said it's the end of 2023. It's almost 2024. You don't have time to waste. And having the right information to know what to look for is really going to make a big difference. And this is what you learn in the class. A lot of people think they know what to look for, but they don't. And if they did, they would be successful. And in reference to trading, for me, it's all about technical analysis. It's all about advanced technical analysis. So the Golden Gap course teaches the strategy and how to trade gaps. The course teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you how to play the stock on the day. The course teaches you chart analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. So empower yourself today in the market. You want to look for a complete system to trade. If you've been thinking about signing up or following me for a while, it's really an investment in yourself. You're investing in yourself, in your future, in your trading career, if this is something that you want to do. Again, my last class for the year is this weekend. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Class tuition is $69.99. Class is December 16th and 17th, 9 to 5. And again, email me if you want to sign up. I'm doing a last class of the year package, which is a huge offer. This ends Friday, December 15th. If you sign up for the Golden Gap Course Combo, which is $74.99, you get the trading room, the market report, and the newsletter free to the end of next year. And you get the trends class with the Golden Gap and the Combo. And you will get the Gap Options course free, which is in February. If you're interested in this, email me or the class here. Any questions from anyone? Hard to believe it's almost 2024. Any questions from anyone? Anybody there? Hello. You can always email me. You can email me at melissa at the stockswish.com. 